Let's have a look at the circuit for the trailer. The trailer air brake circuit, it has its own air reservoir. As you can see, there is an air reservoir that will be filled by the four-way circuit protection valve. And from this compressed air, every time brake is applied, fresh and ready air will be supplied to the load sensing valve. And then it will pass from the load sensing valve, it will go to the trailer brake chamber. And from the trailer brake chamber, when compressed air is admitted into this chamber, there is a diaphragm and a compression spring that is pushing this push rod assembly to this side. But when compressed air is supplied to this chamber, that will push the push rod assembly to this way and that will allow the brake to be applied. So in order to facilitate this, there are some components that are involved in here. For example, there is a trailer control valve that is available on the truck. And there are couplings that will allow air connection between the tractor and the trailer. And also there is a relay emergency valve. Right here we have a relay emergency valve with a release valve. What does it do? Let's see what it does. Now this is a compressed air supply line from the four-way circuit protection valve. This is a line coming from the compressor side. So this is always camping air as long as the engine is running and as long as the air compressor is producing pressure, this line will be used to fill the reservoir. So the relay emergency valve will allow this line to be connected to this red line when there is no signal coming to this line. This line is line 4. Line 4 is a signal, a control signal. So when there is no pressure on this side, when there is no control pressure coming to line 4, the relay emergency valve will allow the input side to be connected to the reservoir line. But when pressure is available on this line, when pressure is available and air pressure is coming from the trailer control valve, the relay emergency valve will block this line and it will connect this red line to the line that is going to the load sensing valve. So this is how it does. Every time brake is applied, this will be pressurized. This line will be pressurized. Every time brake is applied, every time service brake is applied, this control line will be pressurized. When it is pressurized, ready air from the tanker, it will pass through the relay emergency valve and it will come to the load sensing valve. And then it will pass through the load sensing valve and go to the brake chamber. Every time there is no pressure here, when there is no pressure here, this emergency valve will allow the tanker to be filled. Tanker to be filled by line coming from the compressor line side. So this is the principle of operation of the relay emergency valve. When there is control signal coming from this side, for example, when service brake is applied, when foot brake is applied, this line will be pressurized. Or when the parking brake is applied, this line will be pressurized. So applying either the foot brake or the parking brake will pressurize this signal. When this is pressurized, it will connect the line going from the control valve, the line going to the load sensing valve, to the line coming from the air reservoir. When there is no control pressure from this side, when this line 4 is depressurized, it will join the load sensing circuit to the vent. So any pressure within the remaining system will be discharged right here and it will disengage the brake. Right here we have the automatic load sensing valve. The automatic load sensing valve will allow different magnitude of compressed air to be supplied to the trailer brake chamber. So the amount of air that is passing from the relay emergency valve to the brake chamber is dependent on the position of this valve. And the position of this valve is dependent on the condition of the leaf spring. And the condition of the leaf spring is dependent on the load on the axle. For example, if the vehicle is loaded, the spring will stretch 
Have a look at the effect it has on this linkage when the spring is stretched. When the vehicle is loaded, it will have the parking brake stretched. See? The automatic load sensing valve now will allow more air to pass to the brake chamber. But when the vehicle is lightly loaded, it will have this valve activated like so. When it is lightly loaded, it will allow only a small amount of air to pass through the brake chamber. By doing so, it will prevent wheel lock depending on the load on the trailer. So this is the function of the automatic load sensing valve. It is activated by this linkage. This linkage will allow the amount of air that is passing from line 1. Line 1 is the input to the load sensing valve and line 2 is output. So you can see there is line 2 engraved in here. Right here we have line 2 and right here we have line 1. Line 1 is an input to the automatic load sensing valve and line 2 is an output to the trailer brake chamber. To the trailer brake chamber the amount of compressed air supplied to the trailer brake chamber is dependent on the load of the axle. If it is extremely loaded, we need extra brake, so much air will be sent. If it is lightly loaded, in order to prevent wheel lockup, reduced amount of air pressure will be sent to the rear brake chamber. So this is the principle of operation of the load sensing valve. Now hose couplings are there between the tractor and the trailer. In order to allow air passing from the tractor to the trailer and in order to allow common passage from the tractor to the trailer, there are couplings. For example, on this particular case, we have two couplings. This one is for filling up the reservoir. The trailer reservoir will be filled by this mechanism. In order to disengage it, you simply turn it like so. It will open. There is a valve that is open and closed in here. There is a spring-loaded valve. So every time you close it, you press it down. That will allow air to pass from that chamber into this coupling and then it will go to the trailer. So every time you connect the trailer, make sure that this is coupled very nicely. It has to be a snug fit between these two. Otherwise, it will lead to air leakage. So all you have to do is you bring it here, you press this down. Pressing this down will allow the passage of this compressed air from the filler line to pass to here. So you press it down and then you twist it and lock it. Lock it in place. So this is how it is done. This is how the coupling is joined. For, for this particular model, the line which is coming from this side will be for filling up the reservoir. And there is another coupling right here. This one is for controlling the service brake and the parking brake signal to the trailer control. So the trailer control valve will give command to whether apply the trailer brake or not by this coupling. The principle of application is always the same. Right here we have a valve. So press it like so, push it down, and make sure that it is a snug fit. Align it in such a fashion. Then push it. This is how it is connected. This is how the couplings are joined. Hose couplings will allow air passage between the tractor and the trailer. Now there is a slight difference of brake application between the trailer and the tractor. The service brake application will be the same. Service brake for the trailer will be applied by sending compressed air to the brake chamber. Similarly, service brake for the tractor is also applied by sending compressed air from the foot valve to the front brake chamber and to the rear combination chamber indicated in blue. But when it comes to parking brake, parking brake on the tractor will be applied by depressurizing this green chamber. This is a spring-loaded parking brake chamber. Depressurizing this will allow the spring to exert force on the push rod and the slack adjuster. And finally, brake will be applied on the tractor. But when it comes to the service brake and trailer 
when it comes to the parking brake on the trailer, principle of operation would be the same. Parking brake is also applied on the trailer by applying compressed air from the reservoir, by sending compressed air from the reservoir to the trailer brake chamber. So every time for this particular model, brake on the trailer is applied by sending compressed air to the brake chamber. But when it comes to the tractor, parking brake will be applied by depressurizing the parking brake chamber, but parking brake on the trailer will be applied by sending compressed air to the trailer brake chamber. So this is the principle of operation of the air brake in a nutshell. Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you regarding the principle of operation of an air brake system. Simple discussion regarding the components, their function and uh, principle of operation. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new here, do consider subscribing and turn on notifications so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.